All right, Emmy Gen 300. Uh, Dr. Wheeler back here with a, another video. Today we're talking about aliasing. And when we're talking about aliasing, we're trying to ask the question of what do we need our, to set our sample rate to um, in the DAC so that we can be confident that we're getting accurate data and that we're accurately capturing signals that are changing them with respect to time. All right, so we're going to start off with just an example here. Right, so if I'm collecting data, I know my signal's changing with respect to time, and I'm trying to figure out what the frequency of this signal is. I'm going to collect some data. I'll get some data points that look something like this right here. So you can see we've got time down on the x-axis, um, an amplitude up on the y-axis. And uh, here's the data points I've collected. If I want to figure out what the frequency of the signal is, I'm going to kind of connect the dots here. And we'll see that our signal looks something like a sine wave. And it looks like it's at about 2 hertz, just uh, eyeballing it from this graph here. Well, what I'm going to show you now is what the actual signal that uh, I sampled here. So I generated the signal at a very high sample rate so we could accurately see what it is. And we see that the real signal that uh, we have here is actually 20 hertz. So we were way off with our guess of, of 2 hertz in that previous example. So what's going on here? is a phenomenon called aliasing, right? So what's happening is we're sampling a signal, but we're not sampling at a fast enough sample rate to accurately determine what the frequency of the real signal is, right? And when we this happens, our high frequency signal appears to be a much lower frequency than it actually is. We call this an alias because it's our high frequency signal under sort of a false name or a false identity or in disguise. Um, just like it's under an alias, right? So we call that an alias signal when it's showing up as a, a fake low frequency signal in our data. This happens when we have uh, signal components that are have a frequency that's higher than half of our sampling frequency. We always need to get at least two data points on a full cycle of the signal to be able to accurately determine what its frequency is. So what happens is if we have a, a like say a sine wave signal that's doing more than a full period between our two data points, we can't tell if just one period of that sine wave has passed, or two periods of the sine wave have passed, or two hundred or a thousand periods of the sine sine waves have passed. We we can't tell, right? There's we have no way of knowing that. We just don't have enough data to resolve what's going on with that sine wave, right? So this half of our sampling frequency we call the Nyquist frequency. And it's the highest frequency signal component that we can uh, reconstruct from our sampled data. So if you have your DAC set to collect data at 1,000 samples per second, so 1,000 hertz sample rate, the highest frequency signal that you will ever be able to see with those settings is 500 hertz, okay? because that's half your sample rate. You can't see anything higher than that. It's doing more than a full period between two data points, and you're not able to reconstruct that signal anymore. One place that you can see this happen fairly noticeably is in video. Right? So in uh, the way a video camera works is it's taking still images of the world and the stitching them together. Um, and the, we show them in a rapid sequence, and our brains detect that as motion. So a normal video camera, standard uh, television, would be about 30 hertz. So we're getting 30 frames per second. Uh, a little bit fancier cameras a lot of times are going to 60 hertz now. Um, but we still have things out in the world that are faster signals than that, right? Uh, one of the things that's really noticeable is anything that spins really fast that would be in frame, you start to get some interesting effects here. So this is called the wagon wheel effect. And you see the, the tire appears to be spinning really slowly. It's really noticeable if you look at the, the central hub there and the lug nuts on this tire. And you can actually see that the frequency appears to be negative at some points where it looks like the wheel is spinning backwards. Um, another really uh, good example of this is if you take video of a helicopter, right? So the helicopter's rotors are spinning really quickly, but they just happen to be synced up with the shutter speed of this camera here. So the rotors appear to be almost stationary in these two videos, right? So that what we have here is, is the high frequency signal, right? The rotor spinning at this high rate of speed appears to be a much lower frequency signal. In this case, the frequency appears to be almost zero, and they appear to be almost stationary, just because our sample rate has been synced up with the actual uh, frequency of, of our real signal. All right, 
So how do we make sure that we don't get aliases in our signal? Because this could be a big problem is if we have high frequency signal components appearing to be low frequency and we can't figure out what the true frequency of our signal is. So what we'd like to do is just make sure that this is not going to happen to our data. So typically what we do is we implement what's called an anti-aliasing filter. So what we're going to do is block signal components that are above the Nyquist frequency. Okay, so for, for our applications where we're mostly looking at electrical signals, we need to block those signal, high frequency signal components before they get sampled. Because once we sample the high frequency components, that's when aliasing happens. Remember that aliasing is a result of, of not sampling a signal quickly enough. So if we get rid of all the high frequency components before we sample the data, we can be confident that there's no aliases in our collected data after the fact. So typically um, with our DACs where we're sampling voltages, what we'll do is we'll implement an analog low pass filter right before the DAC. We'll block out all the high, pass, the, uh, the high frequency components and make sure that they, those don't get sampled by the DAC so that there's no aliases in our signal. Um, this is different than what you uh, know as anti-aliasing filters if you play video games. If you, a lot of times you go in the graphic settings on video games, there's a setting called anti-aliasing. Um, and this is kind of related, but it's a little bit different. So in video games, you get aliasing where if you have a, a sort of a horizontal or diagonal line on a screen that's made up of pixels, the, the pixels will become noticeable you get these sort of jaggy effects around the outlines of objects. And typically what you do for um, anti-aliasing in, in here is you, you basically blur the image a little bit so that those jagged areas are not as noticeable to the user. So that's what uh, FXAA and MSAA do. Those are sort of blurring algorithms with different levels of how aggressive they are. Um, the one that's a little bit different is the SSAA. Um, anti-aliasing algorithm which is like it generates the image in a really really high uh, pixel count and then resamples the image again um, which is does a little bit better uh, job of preventing these sort of jagged ed edges in um, your image so that's that's kind of the background of what a video game is doing it's a little bit different than than what's going on here we're just trying to get all the high frequency components out of our signal before we sample it to prevent any aliases at all from forming all right, so here's a question that, that we oftentimes uh, ask is, is, if you go into LabVIEW, there's actually a, a filter block in there, and you can set up a low-pass filter, remove high-frequency components um, from your collected data in LabVIEW. And that's really nice. It's easier to set up than an analog filter. You don't have to mess around with a breadboard or getting resistors or capacitors or anything like that. Um, could we just use that to make an anti-aliasing filter? The answer to that is no, definitely not. All right, we have to remember that aliasing is a result of sampling, right? That is a phenomenon that happens when we sample the data. So by the time we've sampled our data, all the high frequency components are already aliased in LabVIEW, right? Remember the sampling happens in the DAC, right? So we have out in the analog space, we effectively have an infinite sample rate. We've got these really high frequency components um, that can come into the DAC, and then the DAC has to sample that at a finite sample rate. So that's where your aliases get formed, is when the DAC actually does that sampling. All the data that gets into LabVIEW has already been sampled, so all the fre high frequency components that you would have in your data have already been aliased and already appear to be lower frequencies than they actually are. Right? So to get rid of aliases and be confident we don't have them in our data, we need to filter those out before the DAC samples them, which means we need to do that in analog hardware. All right? Typically, the way we would do this, the easiest way to do this, is with an RC low-pass filter. Right? So there's the uh, circuit diagram for you right there. It's the easiest filter to implement. Uh, it's just got two components. And um, the cutoff frequency for that is, is pretty easy to calculate. It's just 1 over 2 pi RC. And we set that cutoff frequency to be just below the Nyquist frequency, kind of as close as we can get it with the, capaci or the, uh, the components that we have on hand. Um, and we want to, to make sure that we get rid of all those high frequency components. So we always set the cutoff frequency just a little bit below Nyquist. And that can give us a high degree of confidence that we are removing all of our high frequency components that would become uh, aliases. Right? So we'll have a separate video where we'll talk more about um, 
how we implement filters and some of the different types of filters that you can use. But there's some information about aliasing, which will be helpful for you on your second LabVIEW assignment. Um, as always, stop by the lab and ask questions if you've got them.